Hello, hello, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are all over the world. I'm Olubide Emmanuel, and I welcome you to the final session of our week-long global launch of my latest book, How to Create Wealth as a Career Person. Since Tuesday night, we've been hosting this event, and tonight is the last session. Uh, because tomorrow morning uh, we're going to be having the physical launch of this book in church and then on Wednesday the third uh, we're going to have the global physical launch during the global school of money summit coming up on Wednesday so welcome 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 uh, for those that are just joining us this is my latest book how to create wealth as a career person the Intrapreneur's Guide to the Wealthy Place. It's an amazing book, about like 500 pages, massive, and we've been having testimonies already. Um, I went out to visit um, one of my fathers in the faith uh, today, and he was telling me how that uh, he's already in chapter two of the book, and that he was doing the test, and he was like, he was praying, ah, let me not fail this test too. <laughs> so people are already reading. Uh, we, I shared with you yesterday a testimony that came in from Kaduna. And uh, so we're, we're, we're beginning to see a lot of people, you know, getting the book. People are placing order. People are downloading, uh, paying and downloading. So make sure that you get your copy. But if you are really in Lagos and need you to do everything you can to be at the event on Wednesday, I'm telling you, um, I'm just telling you, it's going to be worth your while. So uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Wednesday for four solid hours, I'm going to be, you know, taking you on three sessions. And the first session will be a workshop session, uh, do some diagnosis, financial diagnosis for the year. And then I'm going to take you on a short masterclass session. And then we'll go on a group uh, Q&A coaching session, all absolutely free on Wednesday the 3rd. So make it a date and join us. Then what I've done is, like I've told you since we began, uh, in this book, we have 16 other contributors. Uh, so it is one book with 17 authors. Um, uh, Leo Scotty, can we reach you on WhatsApp? Yeah, you can reach my office on WhatsApp and then um, if, you need to, if you need to get in touch with me, then they will let me know. But the best way to reach me is email. I personally don't do WhatsApp, but we do WhatsApp on the official line. So the best way to reach me is by email. So just contact the numbers there and we'll take it from there. So we have 16 other authors that contributed. And what we have done since we began is to bring them up. So tonight I'm having two other authors that will be joining me tonight. Uh, Benga Toto is an amazing you know, global HR professional, someone that has been involved in helping a lot of people navigate their career path. And um, if your sita is a major, major uh, medical person uh, in the field of medicine, even within um, the corporate um, organization where she has been, and they're going to be joining me tonight. And we're going to be learning because we've been learning from different perspectives. And if you've joined me uh, from Tuesday, you'll see that, like I said, there's a common thread between everybody. When I wrote to them to be a part of the book, um, they didn't know each other, you know, not that they don't know each other as in not knowing who they are, but many of them did not know who else was involved in the book. And I think many of them are just getting to know now that, oh, you are part of the book, you are part of the book. And by the time you look at what they all wrote, you realize that there is a common thread uh, amongst everyone's contribution. So I, I welcome you. So I'm going to be bringing um, both of them in and then we'll take it from there and see how far we can learn. So get your notes and get ready to learn as I bring in uh, Benga and Ifi. Uh, okay. Okay, so we're expecting the two of them to join me. And I'm going to be reading from one of the chapters, chapter seven. Yes, so, hey, my people, my people. 
I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yeah. Good, good, good. Doing well. So, nice to see you. If you are, you doing today? Very well. Thank you, Doc. Good evening, sir. Compliment of this season to all of you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, you. Thank you, thank you so much. You both gotten your books. Have you gotten your own books? Yes, sir. Sorry, I've okay. not communicated. <laughs> okay. So just to be sure you have gotten it. So I need to hear got your comment. Copy here. And we need to start pushing. The whole world must get a copy. <laughs> uh so I want to before we go on, I want to read from Chapter 7, Retirement Planning. Sorry, sorry, Doc. I can't seem to see you. Am I on? Uh, uh, I, can, I can see you. And I can I'm see Doc. I'm seeing you and I'm hearing you. So there must be something you need to adjust there. Me, I'm not a technological person. Me, I'm old school. <laughs> you are me seeing my own picture. Oh, I, I can okay. see you and I can hear you as well. So if you're only oh. seeing your picture, that means there's supposed to be Maybe the reverse of something is reversed. I don't know. Something needs to be reversed. No, okay. that's so it. Uh -huh. But can you see me now? No, sir. Ah. Ah. Uh, that's uh, technol technology people. Okay, somebody says network, but we are seeing and hearing ah. So how can yeah. it be network? I don't know. So technology people help us. So what do we need to do? <laughs> maybe, maybe she can exit and then you can invite her back okay so let's if try you can exit that. and then oh, be invited let me back exit. Yeah. Yeah. Let me exit. exit and join again then i'll bring you i'll bring you in again okay um because this technology is with me to i'm learning is reverse mentorship <laughs> We are learning from yeah. the younger ones to show us you the way. You are doing well. <laughs> you are doing well, like we say. Ah, uh, okay. So someone is saying, uh, does this book applicable to freelancers and someone in MLN? Does it, any career path, any yes, even for does. entrepreneurs, you are things to learn. Okay, so let me let me bring you before I read um, read this um, retirement planning chapter. Everybody needs retirement plan, no matter what you do. Uh, so, uh, let me see if she has joined back again. Okay, so let me bring her in, and then I would like to read. So, retirement planning is in chapter seven. Okay, can you see me now? Yes, yes, sir. I can see everyone. Good evening. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Good evening. So let me let me read. So. Retirement, retirement planning. Wealth is not sexually transmitted. Marriage is not an economic empowerment scheme. And your children are not a retirement plan. There are three inevitable arrows in the career life of everyone. And nobody can escape it. Therefore, wisdom demands that you understand and plan for them. Retirement, resignation, retrenchment. If you do not resign from your job or become a victim of retrenchment in the course of your career, you will have to retire one day. So yeah. planning for that inevitability is your responsibility. No one will plan your life for you without your direct involvement. You cannot push that responsibility to other people. Retirement is a period or season of your life when you go out of active service due to age or years of service. And planning for this season is vital. Planning is all about you preparing and strategizing on how to ensure that you do not retire shamefully or retire into lack and hardship. Planning, preparing, and strategizing don't come naturally to many people, but they are vital for success in any aspect of life. Proper planning prevents poor performance. If you plan well, you will do well. But if you fail to plan, you have already planned for failure. Things are changing rapidly in our world. And why some people are fighting for the retirement age to be moved up from 65 to 70 or 75, others are putting plan in place to retire young and retire rich. The retirement age was set when the mortality rate was low and only few people lived to be 65 years old. But things have changed now. 
as we see people living far above 70 and 80 years. Many of them have unfortunately had to go back into the labor market due to lack of money to take care of themselves in old age. This speaks to the need to effectively manage the seasons and stages of our lives. Let me stop there. So this book is the latest book in town. So let's hear, I would like you guys to introduce yourself. So Benga, you introduce yourself. Let's know who you are. Give us a brief about your career journey. And then if you, you do the same so that people will get to know you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I believe I'm still very audible. Yes, you are. Yeah, okay, yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's, it's an honor to, to be doing this with you again. Um, I've, joined, I've joined the sessions since Tuesday. And the ones I couldn't join live, I, I sort of like replayed them again. Um, my name is Ben Gatutui, uh, and it's, it's an honor, honestly, to be a part of this book. I've been cleaning it little by little, um, and I had to give one of my family members because I saw, I saw how great it is. Um, my background is in economics. However, uh, I started out my career in consulting, a um, bit of general business consulting, and then dabbled into HR uh, in consulting. And then a number of years ago, I, and I should say very quickly, let me jump ahead of myself. Um, uh, while I was working for, there were two consulting firms that I worked for. Um, one was Augusto and the other was the Workforce Group. So at Augusto was when I started seeing the, the financial implication of what we were doing. Because, I mean, we were essentially a training organization then, and I saw how we would get briefs to run training programs for banks and all of that, and we would bring in faculty from the outside. And the joke was that I know how we would pay one of our fac faculty members then. We pay him for one day what was like my two month salary. <laughs> and that began to make me see that this thing is more than just work. There's, there's like, like a money dimension to this thing. But I was just caught up in, oh, you know, do the work, learn to be technically sound and all of that. And then when I was at workforce was when, like I've said a few times, I learned the business of HR, which, which again, I mean, as we go on, I will share. It's what I personally seen to be a challenge for most professionals. We are professionally competent, but we don't understand the business dimension to the career path that we are on. So I did that for a while and then moved into practice, um, was head of training for one or two organizations. And right now I'm group head of HR for uh, one of the top 10 uh, insurance companies in the country. Um, and, and it's great being here. So I'm, 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 I'm in the people business, like they say. <laughs> Ify, let's meet you. Thank you, Doc. Um, um, uh, if I did it, Osita, affectionately known as uh, Pastor Ifi, I'm a woman of, of many parts. I'm a thought after speaker. I am also a go to marriage counselor for couples and intending uh, couples. I'm a I am a sought after, okay, I've said that I'm a sought after speaker. I am also a certified medical laboratory scientist with over two decades experience. I have dedicated a significant portion of my career to the Central Bank of Nigeria, where I commenced as a senior supervisor with HR department and have since risen uh, to the esteemed position of a principal manager uh, in medical services department, Lagos Division, as head laboratory. I'm a member of the Nigerian Institute of uh, Management and the Association of Medical Laboratory Science Council of Nigeria. Most importantly, I am a repentant lover of God and a shameless believer in Christ. I am an ordained pastor and also sit as a board of trustee member of Truth of Calvary Ministry. Um, I'm married to Chukudi Osita, a business executive. 
if he's a devoted wife and a doting mother of two adorable nations uh, with over 25 years of uh, marital bliss and still counting, if I uses her marital lessons and experience as a strong tool in her counseling sections to achieve maximum success and to further extend my tentacles of impact to beyond my immediate uh, 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 cycle, I host a free bi-weekly uh, uh, on online, uh, uh, online counseling on my social media handle at Ifi Osita on uh, Instagram and, uh, and, and uh, Facebook. I am an author of Finding Purpose in Your Weight, which chronicles my 17 years of uh, wife to motherhood. I am a woman on a mission. Let me stop here. Sir. Thank yes, you. Yes, so woman <laughs> on a mission. <laughs> okay, so this book is out. If you are listening to us, we are talking about the latest book, How to Create Work as a career person, the entrepreneur's guide to the world of place. So you can get it by going to the website right now, www.olumideemmanuel.org. And then you go there, you, there's a secure payment platform there. You can pay, people have been paying and buying all over the world. And then you can also call the numbers uh, for a physical copy, 0809 or 0802-305-9058, the numbers and the website are pinned on the screen. One question I've asked everyone, I believe, yeah, since we started is, how did you get to know about money? Growing up, did your parents sit you down or did you just stumble into it? Because I realized that financial illiteracy is one of the major reasons why a lot of people are not able to create wealth because academic education does not translate to wealth creation, but many people seem to know more about going to school. But when it comes to financial education, it's, it's a missing link. So let's start with you, Benga, then we'll go to you. How did you get to know about finances? What was your upbringing financially like? Did your parents teach you? How did you stumble into this thing? <laughs> no, so I, I honestly can't, can't recall any intentional session. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Any, any, any session that was planned out to sort of run me through the i mean apart from the popular uh proverbs that we all had growing up where money grows where money doesn't grow uh but we, we were we were really taught where to now go and sow the seeds or where the money actually grew but for me i think from from my parents and, and god bless them i i learned it differently so with my dad um i knew my dad was smart and pretty technical, very good at his job, and he rose through the ranks. I mean, my dad was perhaps the only black person at under place for a very long time at a very senior level. So I knew that about my dad. I, I have memories of my dad taking me to his office, uh, I mean, by Babbage at the time, and he was working with the expatriate. So he gave me that sense of, you can be good at what you, you do and rise through the ranks. But that never, really translated into money. And it, it just made me conscious of be good at your job and you will rise, right? On the other end, my mom, I observed her turn money around. Uh, my mom still trades still now. And my memory of my mom around money is, I, I, I just know you can give my mom a hundred thousand there and she can turn it around. She can my mom is always with money. My mom is always calculating. She was always buying and selling, right? And so I observed her trade. And, and that was where I honestly say I picked up some entrepreneurial bites uh, because my mom is always trading. My mom is always with money. My mom is always talking about turning money around or using our social capital to collect goods and sell and all that. So with my dad, I observed him being very good at his job and rising through the ranks. And with my mom, on the other end, I saw someone that I've always created, 
uh, with money and, and sold things and even till now. So that, that was my, but to say I was in any plan session, no. But over the years, I, and as you said up front with a few mistakes, because I was not very intentional about money, even even as I started out my career, I didn't, for me, it was just do the job, learn, 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 but no intentionality around how I was going to make, multiply or manage money through the years. And, and it took a while before from mentors like you and sessions and books, I started aligning this all be good at your job thing with the financial implications of it. Because there were times when if there were real money troubles, like money was not enough to meet some needs, it affected me on the job. So in a bit to be more focused on, on my job and to grow, I saw the need for, for me to address this concern around money not being enough. And then I entered into periods when my salary was good, right? But money just wasn't enough, right? And that was what made me to start seeking mentors and start asking questions from friends and start taking intent, you know, some specific steps to correct that gap. Uh, but that, that's my experience. Wow. If he, how was yours? <laughs> Mommy and daddy sat you down and said, my daughter, this is how you make money. This is how you save. You put this one here. You put this one there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Funny enough, um, it's so sad that I never had a, a parental that having a, to live with my parents. As a 10 years old, I was already an orphan. But mm. I knew growing up, I... <laughs> I, I knew I had a mom who was also a career woman. She worked in the hospital. Those were the extent that I could uh, remember about her because I was, at, as a 10 years old, I was already an orphan. So it was from one auntie going to live with one auntie to another. And uh, my other siblings were all scattered. So I wouldn't say I was properly taught i i i was just there at an orphan but, but um uh, having knowledge of uh financial knowledge i must give my credit to dr olumide Emmanuel. everything I, I know everything i am today i owe it to you sir dr olumide Emmanuel has been someone that uh, i have sat under like in my in the book, I wrote that on saying, how did I meet you? I came across you in my final year, about to do my youth service, which I detailed on that book. And thank God also for Mr. Goodman, who made me to have contact with you. And uh, I must say that everything I learned about money is from you, sir. From you. you. You have always, you know, you, will, you, you always say to us that to those whom you are called, that's whom you are sent to, that uh, I am one of them. miracle worker. <laughs> you are a miracle worker. <laughs> yes, sir. And to those who you are not sent to, that you are like a noise maker. A noise maker. <laughs> yes, I am that one whom you are sent to because I don't know if, I have not, uh, if I hadn't come in contact with you, uh, I don't know what would have become of me. I owe it to you and I owe it to God. I want to bring this, I have never mentioned it to you, sir. I invited one of my, my, my elder sister to Calvary Bible Church and there was a day she came and by the time she sat on the your teaching, she told me, ah, if I, this is where you have been drawing from, you have left us. Mm. And ever since that time, she has, she's a secret mentor that you don't know. She said, oh, is this, there is nothing about you that my, my sister can, in fact, anything about Dr. Lumide Emmanuel, she's eager because she has seen it in me. Like, okay, where did you get this manner of wisdom from? So, sir, everything I know about money or no money, there was no parent 
parental, whatever, this is how you do it. Which parent said at age 10, we are just being thrown from here and there. And thank God today, all credits to Dr. Olumide Imanu. Wow. 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 You're welcome. Let me read again. Those of you joining us, we are talking about this book. I'm just reading different parts. So uh, in chapter, what chapter is this again? Chapter 6, the 10 Career Wealth Code, Code 5. In order to create wealth as a career person, you need to understand the business of your career. One major code that makes the difference between the rich and the poor in the career portal is an understanding of the business of your career. Being a career professional is different from being a career business professional. And the gap is quite wide. Just as people in show business who only understand the show and not the business in the show. Many people work for decades as career professionals in different industries and sectors, yet remain ignorant of the business of their career. Why do you work? Some people work to earn instead of working to learn. So they earn, earn, and earn, yet they remain poor because they have not learned how things work. It is common to see people who have worked in a particular industry or sector for years yet cannot run a business in that industry successfully. This is because while they were in the sector, they were focused only on earning and survival instead of learning and thriving. The salary mentality is a toxic and destructive mindset. The entitlement mentality is a toxic and destructive mindset. The earning mentality is a toxic and distorted mindset. And the survival mentality is a toxic and destructive mindset. You need to have the, the right kind of mindset to be able to create wealth and understanding the difference between the profession and the business of the profession is salient. There's a difference between the medical profession and the medical business. There's a difference between the legal profession and the legal business. There's a difference between the accounting profession and the accounting business. And there's a difference between the teaching profession and the teaching business. So let me stop there. <laughs> this book is too much. <laughs> You've already did it myself now. This is my copy. I've never had it. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, enjoy, yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so get to the website or call those numbers. And then on Wednesday, the second, if you're in Lagos or anywhere, Wednesday, the third, sorry, Wednesday, the third of January, I'm hosting a global school of money summit. It's absolutely free from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Nigerian time at Rail Boats Multipurpose Hall in Edibo. And you can join us on Facebook at Olumide, Olumide or you join me on YouTube at Dr. Olumide Mano. So let me ask you the big question. You guys have been in the career path for years. I know, you know, what you guys have been able to achieve. But there are many people that are also in the same career path with you. And today, if they lose their job in one month, they are beggars. They, they wait for next salary. They borrow last this month. To, so why is it so difficult? Let's hear from your story. Why is it so difficult for career people to create wealth? Why do they make all this money, collect big salary? They have big titles. They do it 10 years, 15 years, and they are still not rich. Why? So Mega, let's hear from your journey, from what you have seen. And then if you, you are even working in Central Bank. Yeah, central bank people. <laughs> that all the money, what is happening to these people? So let's hear you, Bega. Um, I'll try and give, I mean, three, four quick reasons, and maybe I should go on. I, I can explain. One is what we've dealt with. We, we honestly just don't know. We, we don't know better because, I mean, I'm even sitting here and I'm looking through, because over the course of my career, I've been involved in entry-level graduate programs. I mean, just helping people come get their first jobs and put them through training programs. I, I can't say emphatically that all those programs had a session on personal financial management. I, I honestly can't say. So one is that challenge of lack of awareness. We just don't know better, right? Uh, so we just get a job and we work and a salary and then boom, 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 we're just going, right? Two is that when we then get the jobs right and and for people who follow me i see some of my friends uh joining the call already i think over the last 10 years 15 years of my life i've talked about this world of work and the changes and all of that one of the many things 
things that I've emphasized a lot is that we now have multiple generations in the workplace at once. So one of the second reasons why career people now struggle to build wealth is because we meet people on the job from a previous, I mean, very old generation, and they 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 project their fears on us. They tell us their make they they. they they tell their story and sort of impose their errors on us, right? Mm -hmm. So for very young, uh, open minds, very naive minds, you then, your supervisor or your HOD has been in that organization 15, 20 years, and he, he or she brings one rickety car to the office, does not have a house, does not have all of those things. And these are people you look up to and you learn from, even if they are not your mentors. You see them every day, they have influence over your mind. So the way they share their their experiences, the way they talk about money, the way they talk about some people are on this call now, they can remember people who told them not to worry about doing their masters, not to worry about doing some certification, you are wasting your time. And people like us did did it and then see where we are. And all of those people are in every organization. People who have not risen through the ranks, who have not been lucky with their careers, or who are, are wrong, they did some things wrong, so they got stuck at some point. The second reason why career people don't make it through and don't build new wealth is because they have such people in the organizations that have shown them the wrong path and created very wrong. I'll share one example. I remember meeting a lady once at work, one of those career meetings where just talking with young people, and she blotted out this statement that it took me a while to recover from. She said, oh, as a lady, young lady, she does not want to grow too, she doesn't want to have as it were, it's a career too successful. I was like, how do you mean? She doesn't want to rise at all. I said, how do you mean? She said, because a memory of every successful female professional is that they have bad marriages. And for her, I mean, she, she, she said, I was like, how do you mean? She said, she can give me examples. And she, she said, one, two, three, four. Counted those examples. I was like, okay, you're right. But would you listen to me? And let me share my own examples because... I mean, and, and I shared mine, but the mindset was so strong. So that's the second reason why most career people have not built well, because they met HODs, colleagues, more senior people that have projected their own errors and mistakes on them. The third part is this big lie. There's this big lie out there that career professionals don't build wealth and don't have money, that we all have to resign from our jobs and go and start some enterprise. So you have, and it's a big, big fat line. It's a big line. And then you have people who um, um, leave their jobs abruptly. You have people who even, and I'll address this one, people who start side hustles, and then the hustle became a distraction to the main job. And then it also takes money away because they are not doing it properly. There's no learning to it uh, and all of this. And then they get, they, that side also becomes a major issue, messes up their finances and, and, and all of that. And I think the last that I would say is that um, most, and I've seen this again and again, and I help, I help people with it. People don't know how to navigate faces in their careers. Uh, one of the things you said in this book, for instance, um, which, which I love, you gave some real, real information about it. So if you're a career person, for instance, there are, there are some things, depending on where you work or what part you're on, there are some things that at a certain level, when you when you do the work to get into what you would call the senior management bracket or executive management bracket, some things that you will have had to save up and buy with your money becomes a part of the package, right? A vehicle, mortgage, um, travel expense, and some of those things, right? I've seen some package for executives and you, you honestly need to aspire to get into that bracket in life, right? Um, so what I've seen is that some people, you see people with years of experience without quality of experience, right? And you don't, you, you see people who don't know how to navigate their path to get into such levels. People don't know how to navigate the different seasons of their career. So they can quickly get into a phase of their career where things are now, would not be a bit easier. I, I would I would end this answer with one. I remember when this statement came out of my mouth many years ago, and I've refined it a few times. I, I was taking a class, and I said, with my background in economics, I have realized that, and some people will feel offended by this statement, but just think through it. I said, I personally have come to believe that 
and this will be maybe seven, ten years ago. I said in Nigeria, if you allow yourself hit the age thirty, and you have not crossed the ten million naira per annum bracket in your salary, you are in trouble. And I know a lot of people who have crossed that age, who have worked for at that age, maybe they are now five or ten years on their jobs, and they are nowhere near their salary bracket. And this is seven plus years ago. I can only imagine what it is now, and the value of that and all of that. So my point is, growing your career quite all right, but be very intentional about how you transition between faces and how you make sure that that transition, when you move between jobs, or even if you are in an organization, you are intentional about how you tie that to what you earn or what your terms of engagement is. Because at a certain level, it's not about what the organization is giving you because you have gotten a job. You can negotiate these things. You can ask for what we call business induced remuneration. You can ask performance. You can ask for performance bonuses. If you are if you are in sales, you can say, "Oh, I want to hit this budget." But once I do that, this is what I want in return. You can ask for a profit bonus um, and several other things that you can ask for. First is be good, yeah. but as you rise, be intentional. But as you are rising, don't take your eyes off the contract that you are working for, or else you will have this mismatch in you are technically sound, you are risen through the ranks, but you are not yet enjoying some things. And yes, I would say it, a lot of HR people may not say it. If you are not asking and demanding, we may not put it on the table for you. I, I, I'll leave it at that. Yes, yeah, so inside information. Uh, but I it know, if you are not asking, it, we won't tell you. Now, we won't tell you. Said, it, you have to be good. Yes. Because see, it's not about activities, it's about productivity. If yeah. um, because what you are saying, I see, if you are not good, you, you know, in your body, you can't demand. All, all, all the interface to get to do for para. You that you are not good, that we are looking for how to sack you. You yeah. don't want to come and be making demand. No. <laughs> you will just lose your job. But if you are very good, I'm telling yeah. you, you will be amazed at what you can get. I have a staff. Yeah. This December alone, if I, my wife and I still discuss it this week, this December alone, yeah. this guy has collected from me over a million in commission. Just this December alone. This December, over a million, and his salary is less than 300,000. Let me he now ask you a follow-up question, sir. Doc, a quick follow-up question. Now yeah. imagine that person coming to ask you he or she wants to go. Your first reaction is, a little bad day. where are you going? What do you want? Yeah. Yeah. So, so I've had to pay him over a million income because he has brought results. Because yeah. I was not seeing some results. So in November, I called all of them. I said, "Come, we have to produce. Oh, by the end of this year, this, this, this is due. If any of you bring this result, you are getting ten percent of whatever you brought." Nice. And, yeah. and the guy has brought about eleven million in one month, and he has got he has gotten his ten percent. <laughs> so now, because if you don't produce, you won't, but if you produce, it works. So, if he, why are career people, central park people, you put that are fully in our money? Eh? <laughs> so, what's happening? What's your experience like with people in the career path? Why are they not creating wealth? Okay. Let me begin from experiences that I saw. Okay. When I joined the bank, number one is inability to learn from mistakes. Mm. Inability of people who are already there to learn from mistakes. You see, you can either learn from your own mistake or you learn from other people's mistake. But I choose to learn from other people's mistake because learning from my own mistake might be very, very tough. When I joined the bank, there is this offer to stay in the quarters but from my kind of person i never liked this uh quarters uh, thing that staff quarters i like my privacy kind of and also i think the the kind of man also that i have also um likes that kind of life too but uh along the line trying to uh to watch things 
things as it unfolds. I, I, I find that, that uh, people who work for a number of years, we live in the quarters. And you see, when you live in the quarters, they give you great, when you are, when you are retired, you have a grace of three months after that you are to vacate the premises. And I, 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 I watch people, I watch them throw things away. At the initial stage, I was shocked and surprised and I had to ask, why are they throwing their things away? Doc, you'll be surprised that people who are on the managerial level, executives, some executives at that time, their things will be thrown away. And I looked back and I asked my, I had to sit down one day and say, uh -uh, is this life? How can someone work on the num this number of years? Give and take, you would have worked for at least 15 years. Some people work 20 years. Some people work 30 years, depending on the age that you join. And at the end of your service time, they are throwing away things. And I ask, so what happened between the time that they were in the system? It shows that they were not able to plan. They did not have financial education, which a lot of people have talked about in the, in the course of this. They were ignorant of savings and uh, planning for the future. So inability to learn from mistake, I began to ask myself, if I knew, so is this how working can be? Because the, the, the issue is that they, they, because of what comes in all the time, they believe that that is how money will be flowing. So they don't tend to sit down. And thanks to you for teaching us uh, financial management. Probably those ones are ignorant, nobody, because these things are not taught in school. Nobody will tell you you have joined the bank. Nobody tells you this is how you are to plan your life. In fact, the retirement courses that they do, they even leave it maybe two to three years at the time you're about to retire and they bring you in. So what is the essence of that thing? What is the essence of that training at that point in time? I feel that this training should have been done earlier, at least letting people know you are here, like you usually tell us, that the day we enter, we should start planning for our retirement. And I'm not sure those um, top management uh, executives, even the junior ones, also have the same issues. And you find out that this has become uh, like a, a really embarrassing situation that an executive will work maybe 30 years and your things are being thrown out. It shows that probably the person does not even have an accommodation. And I remember vividly also that when I also joined the bank, you find out that, that I did not live in the quarter. Some people also did not live. Some people chose to live in all this high browse area. And also, I lived in Idimu. I'm still living in Idimu. And Idimu part uh, is in Lagos. And at times when you mention to people that, oh, I live in Idimu, they will ask you, where is Idimu? And I'm like, you know, you try to like uh, look for a, a, a landscape uh, that's a, a figurative uh, landmark to, to use to explain. Landmark, thank you, sir. Landmark to say, okay, this is where Idimu is. But you see, because there is a, there is a, a plan that I already have in mind, I already know where I am going to. And I knew how much we were paying then at the early onset. Some people could go to Bagada then. Some people were living in uh, Ikoi. I remember asking one of my colleagues then, so how much is your, how much do you pay yeah. for rent? He said a million two. And you know, the, the way they say it with this arrogancy. Oh, and a I was also two. like, ah, yes, that, that's, a, a million that's two. two of land. <laughs> exactly. I'm also coming to that. And I'm like, and I'm paying maybe like, like 300. They will, so by the time they are looking at you, they are looking at you as if you don't, you don't belong. But when you know where you are going to, such things will not move you. So most times, career people are not able to plan because in 
ability to learn from other people's mistakes. And some people still see those mistakes. They will tell you there's time, there's time, there's time. There is time, there is time, there is time, and the time, <clears throat> by the time they realize it, the time has really gone. Then another area is liabilities. Liabilities, a lot of career people live on liabilities, a lot of liabilities to show up. I remember also, this is a live testimonial. I have a colleague also, a junior one with me, and I saw that this new phone looking very good you know some people they use the latest at any point in time not that their phones are bad not that it's not working properly but they want to be in tune this is the latest we need to get it we are the one that is uh so i asked so how much is this phone hmm. the lady could not like she could not say the price I said, Tell me now maybe I, I would like to buy this um eh, eh. these are liabilities buying liabilities things that you can really do away with so by the time the money is coming they are buying things that are not necessary by the time i prone so much to find out i say okay i asked another person so this phone i like to have it so how much is it let me know they say no no, my, you are not, you can't, you, we know you can't buy it. I said, why? Why do you think I, I can't buy it? They said, no, we know, we know. They already know that I cannot buy such. But by the time I heard of the price, dog, by the time I heard, I said, so, almost a million eight hundred to ah, buy it. And I asked myself, <laughs> how many blocks, how many blocks? Look, can this one give me as a good person that I am? That has so, taken the, the house to, to window level. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So a lot of people, a lot of career people are not able to create wealth because they they so much dwell on liabilities, liabilities that are not worth it. Like you always tell us that if we wear the dress of tomorrow today, <laughs> it becomes a problem. And if we are, if we, if we eat the food of tomorrow today, it's also a problem. So people should learn to live within their means. Don't live beyond your means. Overspending and accumulating debts. Debt. I have also seen someone, doc, that collected loan, loan and kept the loan. It did not invest with it. They were bringing things and it was buying things you see at a point in time it will look like as if this woman your own is too much they will be dodging it when they are doing it they'll be dodging and most of those people who brings the things for them to sell also they are will i say they are wicked but because these ones are, are maximizing opportunity they are maximizing opportunity because me i will look there is no way my look if i don't want to thank god for for, for what you have been teaching us, you know, if I don't need it, I will not buy it. Delayed, dra uh, uh, delayed uh, gratification. gratification. <laughs> exactly. But when you do it, it will look like this one does not belong. So a lot of people are not able to create wealth. Ignorance, uh, lack of discipline, uh, living beyond their needs, liabilities, inability to learn from people's mistakes. Wow. It's a key one. Thank you. Wow. Wow. My God. My God. Hey. So now these are contributors oh, to this book. Oh, and there are 16 of them. 16. Imagine what is inside this book. Hey. 16 of I them. So copy. you need to get a copy of this book. It's called How to Create Wealth as a Career Person The Intrapreneur's Guide to the World Place. And um, you can get it online now at olumidemanuel.org. It's a secure payment platform there. People have been doing that already. And you can get the fiscal copy by calling us. So wherever you are in Nigeria, the soft copy is 20,000 Naira. The hard copy is 30,000 Naira. If you are in the UK, it's 30 pounds. And then you pay 10 pounds extra for postage. If you are in the US, Canada, or any other part of the world, it's $50. And then you pay extra ten dollars 
for postage. And um, on Wednesday the third, Wednesday the third, we're going to be having a free school of money, free global school of money summit from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Railboat Multipurpose Hall in the demo. We're going to be having the physical lunch, and I'm going to be sharing with you. We're going to have, we're going to be taking three sessions. You have opportunity to ask questions. I'm going to be autographing for people, so you need to get it. And I'm also going to save this video on IGTV, and it's going to be uploaded on my YouTube channel so that you can listen to all these authors speak, listen to them, because this is amazing. This, in fact, this is just like bringing the book to life. Um, so let's move on. So let me ask both of you this question before we go into the final word. If someone is coming to you now, maybe someone is listening to us now and the person is just graduating from school or you are speaking to youth couple that are about to start their work life and someone wants to go through the HR path like you or someone wants to go through the medical path like you, what are maybe just because of time, just three advice you will give your younger self that is about to start out three advice that they look if you want to create wealth to to make it to this 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 so yeah. let's start with you baby. Uh, uh, number one uh, uh, find find mentors find find and, and maybe sometimes when we say find mentors it sounds cliche so find people that are older than you uh, around you uh, and who have superior knowledge in different things that you can go to consistently and ask questions. That would be my number one. Number two is, if you're just starting out in HR or any other profession, um, try to have a long-term perspective. At least, at least try to see 10 years from, your, from the start point, at least. And I'm not saying have it all clear, all put together, but have a sense of what that 10 years is like. Now, that this second Point is important because there are some people who if they do that they will not take some jobs mm. or if they take those jobs they will plan to leave there on time because you truly can't see 10 years on that job or you can't see that job probably are going to extinction or you can't see yourself still doing that same thing 10 years from now so for instance people are contract workers people who work in customer service those sort of roles you, you literally can see 10 years, or right? whatever that 10 years is on that job, you know it's not going to get you anywhere. The third one, and I mean this with every sense of responsibility, look, not every job get money in the future. Yeah. It, 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 there is, we all think about our, the fact, the, we think about our career growth and all those things, but we don't consider the financial implication of certain career paths down the line. I think, I think for instance, I'll just give an example. Uh, okay, yeah, so let's let's stay in this customer service thing, right, since I just mentioned it. If you, if you spend the next 20 years doing customer service, customer experience management, compared to me doing finance, accounting, and I can be the CFO, or I can be an HR director, or I start out in technology and I look at what, my point is, don't just pick any career path because it's your passion, it's what you love. It's, those are great things to look at, but another metric to consider is the financial implication of that career path 15, 20, 30 years from now. If you do those three things, um, you'll be on the right path. Wow. If you... Yes. For young aspiring, uh, young professionals, Professionals in the medical laboratory field, I will uh, first say that you should look beyond, just look beyond doing the bench work. We call it the bench work. The bench work as in attending to patients day to day. You should aspire to uh, embrace the entrepreneurial spirit within uh, the, the, the industry as far as uh, seeking to know. Um, the ways of importation, uh, going into consumables. You see, uh, 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 medical laboratory science is just beyond collect blood, do this. No, but if you still insist on running it, you have to go beyond also having just your first degree because your first degree, like Dr. Lumide Emanuel will always say, that it's like the new YF. 
So you have to go further. You, 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 you have to get some certifications in it. Then you also need to embrace this. Uh, uh, some people will tell you, no, I don't have strength. I don't have all, the, all this uh, counsel, wahala. To be sincere, Doc, there is a lot of prop, uh, uh, stress when it comes to doing, doing it the right way in the medical field. Because the stress, the counsel we give you, that's the body now. Some people will tell you, no, I don't have that, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't want that stress. Doctor has made me to know that everyone is not called to be an entrepreneur, but everyone is called to be an investor. So you need to invest in the medical uh, uh, profession, in that medical laboratory science profession. Investing in it, find out the, uh, the jobs that can give you money on that. Let your money also work for you. And above all, you need to embrace God in all those things. Without God factor, you are nowhere. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Amazing 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 so these two phone numbers are very important so that you want to get in touch with us from anywhere in the world you want to get details of all the things we do these two phone numbers are very important 0809-144-7423-0809-144-7423 and 0802-305-9058 Zero eight zero two three zero five nine zero five eight, and the website where you can get the book is www.olumideimano.org. This is my own copy. You see the author's copy. I'm already reading and taking notes, and it's a book that you need to have because I'm telling you we need to change things in the career world. So make sure you get a copy of this book. Then follow me on all my social media platform on Instagram and X, formerly Twitter, at Olumid Emmanuel. Olumid Emmanuel on Facebook at Olumide dot Emmanuel. And then you can go to my YouTube channel at Dr. Olumide Emmanuel on YouTube and watch all the different recordings of all the different series we have done. And then on Wednesday, the third, few days from now, let's come together for the Global School of Money Summit. It's absolutely free and it's going to be our own way of empowering you and equipping you to take over in 2024. 2024 is a leap year, and there's a possibility for you to take a giant leap and a quantum leap. So get your copy now. Let's hear your final word. What's your final word for our people? And why should they go get this book? So, Benga, final word, if you uh, final word. Benga, let's start. I mean, with you. thank you so much, Doc. Uh, I've, I've had a, I wanted to have a flow. I didn't know how to really prepare for this, but this, this has gone on well. Um, uh, and if anyone has any question, just send Doc a DM. Uh, for anything I said, specifically send me a DM, I will respond. But this is my last thought. Um, and this is a personal belief, uh, and I am saying, I'm seeing it as a thought that is now, it's becoming a practice, and I, I love the growth of this conversation in, in, in the marketplace. I personally believe that every, every employee Employee or whatever the professional that you're, whatever profession you're in, take you should be take your job as something that you will be so good at. You will grow in your career. You will grow the right networks that you should have, but you will ultimately be able to do a business with it. Um, from HR to finance to audit to compliance to medicine, whatever it is, whilst you're starting out and you're still an employee, every job you have, every interaction with colleagues, bosses, and customers are all, I mean, it's just a free school, as it were. It's like you're paid salary to be taught how to do something, right? I have seen that if, if I know that 20 years from now, I will not just be practicing HR or business advisory that I do. I will have a business with it. My attitude has been different. That's one part of it. The second part of it, again, personal belief, is that I saw from observing, you know, my guys at work and the way people used to say this thing, just never really settled well with me that, oh, I will rise to the very peak 
and then when I retire, I will go and start something. I just didn't think, think it was right because I saw people who, by the time they are starting, they, they grew so fast and so high that by the time they are starting from that peak, whatever they are starting, it's too small in their hands. Like, what's this? And they was like, you live as a executive director, you're leaving expenses alone, or what Marga would call the social cost of being an executive director. You now want to, you want an SME that is just starting out to carry all of that cost. You kill that business in in months. So I personally believe that I don't know what what age or what stage that would be, but somewhere on that trajectory, before you rise too high and you got into the peak and you now want to retire, I personally believe people should start. And with technology and a good network of people, and please don't believe this big fat lie again that people got people are not faithful, people will not be able to run the business. You should also create the time, you know, your weekdays, your weekends. I believe people should start that business in any way, register it, hire people to start, do the research work, do all your business planning, meet with your expert, anyone you need to meet with to help to begin to put the business together. The benefit is that at a certain career, at a certain point in your career, if you have started and you're growing and this is growing, it may not grow at the same pace that your career is growing, but it's growing. And you, by the time you are leaving paid employment, you are not having to go and start from scratch that would rather be too small or too dirty or some will consider too you know, very demeaning for them to go and start that sort of career. And, and that would be my, my last one. Thank you. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. So it's time to push you, all your people. Tell them this. Yes, yes, yes. I, I promise I'll do that. I'll do that. Uh -huh. uh, Jackie, I can see you on this call. Jackie, I'm, I'm calling you out right now. You need to get this book. <laughs> uh, you need to get this book. And I know what you will do. You asked me to send you a copy, but I'll send you a copy if you can get five people to buy it. Jackie, I'm calling mm -hmm. you out now, right? I'll send you yes, a copy where you want to get five other people to buy it. Start selling, you know, everybody become a marketer now. This is our uh, baby, oh yeah, banjo, banjo. If it was your last one. <laughs> My last word for every serious minded career person is to get go get this book. It's very hot now. And not just getting it, get it and read it if you want to progress in your career. You've heard about all the contributors, about 16, coupled with the guru himself, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. So you can't afford not to get this book. If you have read The School of Money, then you will know that this is a must. Then to those my colleagues, I know some of you are watching right now, and uh, you've been asking me, so when is it going to be out? School of Money, I read it. When is this one going? It's out now. It's out. Yes, Bring your 20K. And don't uh, tell me 20K is too much. You can deny yourself of so many things. Deny mm -hmm. yourself and make sure that that 20K is just small change. You know, when it comes to buying this kind of the thing, some people would rather waste money in other places and see this 20K as a very huge amount. Cinema, so please deny yourself. Cinema <laughs> tickets, where we go buy now, 7,000, oh, all this uh, tribe of Judah, Malaika, and all this of Monadi. Mm -hmm. So they, please get the cinema, 7,000, 7, and they say they don't want two hours, your money don't burn. Yeah. <laughs> so please, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. You so thank, thank you so much. much. So, thank you. The Amazon is, is not on Amazon. Yeah. Manor.org. That is the Amazon. <laughs> Ulumidemanor.org. That's the website to go to. We are on that. That's our Amazon. Ulumidemanor.org. So go there. God bless you all. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank let you, the, everyone. Thank you. Let the thank sales you. begin. Thank you, Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Get your copy. Call the yes, numbers on the sir. screen. And then uh, I'm going to save this on IGTV now. Um, uh, so I tried the website. Uh, people have been buying on the website. Oh, olumidemanual.org. Olumidemanual.org. 
We've not had um, issue. So call those numbers, those two numbers right there. Call the numbers on the screen if you're having any issue with the website. Call the numbers. And if you can make it on Wednesday, I need everyone. We're expecting thousands of people. Wednesday morning, we're expecting you at Real Booth Multipurpose Hall in the demo. God bless you all. Bye for now.